So this video will be for inspiration as well as for some knowledge. If you are in a phase of your career where you are transitioning, you are moving from one career to another, I think this video will help you. If you are especially interested in tech and want to make some good money, decent money, then you need to acquire some skills. So in this video, I'm going to talk about all those skills which are required to make $100,000 in tech. So I have divided this in five different criteria. Number one, programming languages. Number two, level of difficulty. Number three, average salary. Number four, level of education. And number five, industry demand. See, all those jobs, all those skills will be judged on these criteria. Because you need to have some criteria, right? If you are moving from one job to another, probably need to learn more skills. Then only you can make more money. So skill number one, web development. So this channel is all about web development. All I talk about is web dev. Uh, so I think you probably already know what a web dev is. So you can divide web dev in two sections, like making websites and making apps. So website is a simple page where you don't need to have access. It doesn't require a database. An app is something which is more dynamic. It has databases. You need to have some kind of access to use it. And nowadays we're using web apps. And this is kind of like new terminology we've been using last 10, 15 years. And there are different frameworks which you can use to make those web apps. If you know Python, you can use Django, Flask. If you know JavaScript, you can use Next.js, Solid, Remix. There are different frameworks. If you know PHP, you can use Laravel. So there are different languages which you can use. The main languages which you need to learn if you want to start with web dev is JavaScript, Python, and PHP. These are the three most important languages you need to learn. I mean, there are so many different languages as well, but I would highly recommend learning these three languages at least, or at least start with JavaScript first. So barrier to entry to web dev is comparatively easy, although there's a certain demand, like sometimes you need to have a bachelor's degree or master's degree, but most jobs don't require like more than bachelor's, or sometimes they don't even require bachelor's. You can do a bootcamp for six months or one year, and you can certainly apply for web dev positions. And when it comes to demand, I think there's a lot of demand for web developers, because see, previously we used to make software on operating systems. If you have Windows, you used to have like those Windows software, but you still have, but we used to have to access that service. So most of the apps you can access via web. So that's why there are more jobs because web has acquired a lot of those softwares and we need web developers to make those softwares. And there are a lot of junior positions available for web developers. So if you want to apply, you can apply. If it doesn't require a degree, if you have a degree, that's good. If you, if you don't, then you can still apply. And if you went through a bootcamp, you can mention that in your resume. So getting a web dev job is comparatively easier than other skills which I'm going to talk about next. And if you want to learn web dev, there are different resources you can use. You can go to Udemy, you can go to YouTube, and you can use something called Free Code Camp, which has a lot of material to learn more about web dev. So now let's move to our skill number two, DevOps. So DevOps is a combination of two skills actually, development and operations. We just talked about development. If you want to create a website or if you want to create a web app, you need to develop it. And operations is something when you take that application and you put in the hand of users. So there's a lot of process going in between. There's a lot of life cycles going in between and you will be the one who will be working on that. So DevOps basically is a way to combine those processes. And there are different tools, techniques, languages you'll be using if you want to become a DevOps engineer. And when it comes to languages, you need to learn Python and Bash scripting. There are different technologies which you also need to learn like Linux, Docker, and GitHub. You need to have command on all those technologies as well as it's good to have some kind of certifications as well because see, the DevOps will be working on a cloud platform. Either it will be AWS or it could be Azure. So you can do some kind of certifications. You can go to azure.com or aws.com and find those certifications. And to learn DevOps, you can try again YouTube and there are different instructor which teaches and you can take some paid courses on Coursera or different paid courses websites so that you can learn those skills. If you don't have a computer science degree and when it comes to difficulty to get a job, I would put it as medium because see, there are very few job openings for just junior DevOps engineers. So you need to have some kind of experience as a developer so that you can transition yourself from a developer to a DevOps engineer. I would put it in a medium difficulty level because I think because you need some kind of experience or you need a degree, it's relatively harder to get a DevOps jobs. 
The average salary of a DevOps engineer is around $140,000, but you need to have five, six, seven years of experience to earn that much salary. You're not going to get that salary when you just started. You probably started with like fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. And as you learn new skills, as you prove yourself, you might get on more. Now let's move to skill number three, artificial intelligence, AI and machine learning engineers. So AI is booming right now. A lot of young people want to become an AI engineer, machine learning engineer. And there's a lot of demand because see, there are a lot of new AI models coming literally every day. So we need someone to make those models test those models, put it to production. So if you want to become an AI or ML engineer, first of all, you need to have some kind of master's or PhD degree. If you go to job boards, you will find that nearly all jobs require to have some kind of master's or PhD degree. Either it could be in maths or engineering or computer science. You need to have those skills before you get an AI ML engineer. So if you're doing that or you're planning to do that, then good for you. But if you don't have that or you just like, you just have a regular bachelor's degree, what you can do is you can build products on top of AI APIs. So you can build products, services on top of Cloud AI, ChatGPT, right? So you can APIs and make your application on top of that. And then what you can do, you can apply for those jobs. Maybe they'll hire you because you showed some kind of interest. But if the requirement is that you need to have those skills, I don't think they'll hire you. Or if you plan to do that, you can do that. But they need engineers who understand those APIs. So if you build those products, you can take that skills and apply for that job. And maybe they'll hire you. I mean, who knows, right? If you show some interest, if you build real world products, and if they're looking for an engineer who can hook their APIs with their system, maybe that's a golden opportunity for you. So if you're into AI ML, you don't have a master's PhD degree, then this is what I would do. The average salary of an AI ML engineer is around 150, 160K. Uh, but again, you need to have years of experience working with models. As a student, even, even if you're doing master's PhD, you'll be gaining experience, right? So you need to have experience. Uh, and most of the jobs are in companies who have data, a lot of data, and who need people to make models. So there are few jobs, but if you're interested, you can still do that. Level of difficulty is really high because you need to have master's and PhD. You need to have some kind of experience before you even apply for those jobs. Skill number four is project management. This is one of the skills where you don't require a language. To become a project manager, you don't need to have knowledge of programming languages, but it's good to have knowledge of tech. Whatever product you're going to be part of, you should have some kind of knowledge, like what are you going to build, right? You sh should have some kind of knowledge, e either working as an engineer, working as a QA. So you need to have some kind of skills before you become a product manager or project manager, because either you have to manage people, so you need to have some kind of people managing skill, or you need to have some kind of tech management skill, because when a product is built, we need all kinds of different people. We need engineers, we need QA, we need designers. So we need all of them and we need someone to manage that site. So as a product person, you could either apply for a Scrum Master job where you'll be dealing with Jira boards, where you'll be making tickets so that developers, engineers, QA, designers, so that they can do their work because you'll be assigning them work. Or you can become a person who manages just people. Like you'll be having a one-on-one -on -one with your team member, with your juniors, or maybe with your seniors as well, so that you can plan and move ahead and take your project to next level. No one will just give you the job. Okay, I know you don't have any experience. Why don't you manage our whole project? Yeah, so nothing will happen like that. You need to have some kind of knowledge, some kind of experience. But the good thing about this project management job in tech is that you don't have to be like strictly coming from a tech job. If you have experience managing people, you can apply for those jobs in tech where you only require to managing people. You don't need to touch tech. But if you learn, if you get certifications, then you can make yourself more hiring. So certifications are must. So the more certifications you have, higher will be your chances to get a job. So level of difficulty is medium. The average salary of a project manager is around $140,000. So now let's move to our fifth skill, which is data science. So data science has been really popular from past half a decade. Uh, since we have gathering a lot of data, we need people who can manage that data, who can read those data. So if you are especially interested in statistics, if you're interested in mathematics, you have some kind of degree in maths, I think you will be favorable to those positions. Because see, when you have a lot of data, because you'll be doing a lot of scripting, you'll be dealing with a lot of data, and I think Python and R are one of the best languages which you can learn to get a data science jobs. They mostly prefer a master's degree. The higher you have, the higher the preference, because again, you'll be dealing with a lot of data, and you need to have some kind of experience before you work in a data intense application. You'll be building algorithms, 
you will be building recommendation algorithms you will be building a lot of uh, data tracking applications where you need to predict something whether it will be a weather app or it will be a recommendation app for let's say an application like youtube where you have a lot of data and you need to predict what's going to happen next at that position you need a data scientist someone who can predict who can use mathematics to predict what is going to happen next and difficulty wise i would put it as medium because you need to have a degree at at least a bachelor's degree in math or engineering the higher the better because data science is limited to companies where there are more data so there are not as many jobs and you can certainly do some kind of boot camp and there are courses which you can do online and offline which are fast paced you can do it like 9 months or 12 months and you have your degree and i think i'll recommend if you can do that if you can do that 9 10 12 month courses and you have interest in data science i think this is one of my favorite skills to have because as we are gathering more data we would be require more engineers to find meaning from that data we can't just look at the data and and find predictions we need to have people who can look at the data and and predict things if you want to learn you can again use youtube you can use paid courses or you can use udemy coursera there are different uh, even universities who are giving you fast uh, pace courses which you can take and complete in less than a year and at least you will have a masters or a bachelor's degree uh, which you can apply which you can take and apply for those jobs the difficulty level is medium to high because you need to have either experience education to even apply for those jobs and the average salary of a data scientist is around 150000 us dollars well those were the five skills which i think could be beneficial for your career if you are in a transitioning phase if you if you don't know what to do i think this video might have given you some kind of idea what you can pick and you can do all your all your research as well you can use chat gpt you can use google search or you can watch other videos where they talk about all those technologies which are getting popular now and there will be a lot of jobs in the market where there's more data more ai more application needs to be built so there is a lot of things going to happen in next 2 3 years and if you're interested i think you should plan now you don't have to wait so that when things get better you can take the opportunity so if you're interested please subscribe to my newsletter which is free and every week on every sunday i'm sending you one front end challenge so if you are in interview process or you want to learn front end please subscribe to my newsletter well i think that's it from today's video uh, if you have any other skill you want to mention please mention in the comments and i will see you next time in a new video thanks a lot for watching